Hello and welcome back once again to the show. My name's Relevant. This is Do All The Things. On today's episode, I'm gonna build an experimenter platform, prototype platform for my pedal builds or pedal builds in general. Uh, yeah, stay tuned. So if you've been following the comedy, you know I've uh, busted off a bit of a uh, few pedal builds there. And I put these together. I just YOLO bombed them together. Sound unheard. Having no idea what these circuits would sound like or if I was doing it correctly. And in some cases I was like, hey, yeah, this is cool. In other cases, kind of like, eh, kind of wish I did this differently. Uh, and I've reworked a few of those uh, pedals since. Just, just slight tweaks of capacitors and whatnot to suit my taste. And I kind of wish I had done that ahead of time. Now I haven't really got any other pedal builds planned right now, but there are circuits that I would like to try to see how I would like like them, but I don't necessarily want to make them permanent. And I want to make sure <laughs> if I do want to make them permanent, there's something I'm actually going to like. Yada, yada, yada. So in order to do that, we need to set up a bit of a prototyping platform. Now you might recognize this pepperoni right here. This is a breadboard. This is one of your uh, best friends when you're trying to figure out situations. This one right here is my freestyle breadboard. It's all loosey goosey so that I can do whatever the heck I want with it. You know, I got like a bigger platform here that's a little bit more uh, for complicated builds, you know what I mean? Dirt, 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 dirt. It's actually logic right now. Uh, it's kind of a little computer. Another project I'm working on for an amp. But in order to make this work conveniently, we need something resembling a solid platform that's gonna have the input output jacks, it's gonna have the power jacks, and even bypass switching so we can do uh, A-B comparisons. So, how do we do that? I don't want to permanize my freestyle board in such a way that uh, it's gonna get stuck on here. I wanna be able to have it loose again. And in fact, I'm gonna make a slight upgrade to it that I planned on doing a little while ago, but just never did. Ah, oh, yes sir, now it says the rubber feet, so it's not quite as slidey. Oh, not as slidey, but still, maybe I should have used smaller rubber feet. Either way, I'm gonna need these for where I'm going. Now I'm gonna need something to mount the fixtures, like the pot, the, the jacks and whatnot too. Uh, here's just, you know, a bog standard friggin' metal plate. This is a box cover for electrical enclosures. Hey, maybe I saved myself a, a hole. Just mount this switch right, oh. Yeah, yeah, I could probably mount that switch just right in there. Save myself having to drill another hole. So, I need to bend this. I just want but a little snoot of it. Bolt it on to this board. Maybe about this much. So I've just got to go ahead and square that up. Oh, now we haven't got any fancy uh, metal brakes here. I'm hoping if I just kind of stick this in my vise right along that line. Gotta be precision. Yeah, right about there. Uh, maybe I should bolt this down. It, it bolts up to my other. You probably think, why do you have a loose vise? There's bolt holes in my other bench over there. This is some, this has gotta be like 18 gauge metal. Ah, oh, this is working. You know what? Good enough. Oh, I actually turned out, oh, there's a little texture in there from hammering and yeah. It turned out a little bit better than I expected actually. Oh, look at that butt, it just sits there now. All right, so, da di da di da something like that. And then this piece of board here, we gotta give it a cut. I'm thinking right about there. And I just need to run this outside real quick and give it a quick little with the circle saw. All right, now that's done. We busted out Pressy Bro here to kind of put the holes in this cheese. I just got to kind of figure out where we want this. Right about there. We're going to put a screw here because there's already a hole there. We'll try to get the uh, second screw hole maybe a little closer in there. Uh, will I be able to get a drill bit in this corner? I don't know. Can't even get a, oh, maybe the right size drill bit. Longer boy. Oh, it'll be tight, bud. It'll be tight. All right, let's see. Yeah, crisis averted. Remember, you cannot impress her if you don't chamfer and deburr. Okay, so now we need to mount our jacks, input, output. Uh, you know, that's not what I traditionally use as an output jack. Uh, I want to get them up a little bit so that they're not uh, interfering with the board. 
Uh, we should have lots of room realistically. No real rhyme or reason to this one. We're gonna have a switch up here. Input first, output second, power jack. Now I just have to choose their plane of existence. Puts one here, one here, and one here. Oh, say. Ah, this is gonna be all uh, cone bit extravaganza for these guys. And also a higher deck, bud. Get that deck up there, bud. All right, let's see how the cone bit handles this metal. I'm worried about this thing locking up and cutting my hands off. I don't know that I have the proper kind of clamping device that I need for it. Oh, that's useless. Whatever, they say not to use gloves when you're rotating machines lest they get hung up, but uh, I just don't want to slice my hand open. I think we're mostly done with Pressy Bro. It's a little warm. Uh, the concern that I have is that I, I got this to mount here and I might have to put some holes into it. Wait, it's still hot. So I just kind of want to plot out where this thing is because I want to cut relief for the rubber feet. There, 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 there. So a hole there, a hole there, a hole there. Oh, what you want to bet my freaking wood uh, saws are outside? Hmm. If I got those holes accurate enough, this bit's gonna be big enough. Okay, except now we just have these chowder holes. That's nice. So that's always nice to have chowder holes, sir. It's just, it's just easy to work with. Not. All right, how does this align? Does it align? One, two, three, four is off. Or is it? What if we uh, pull the foot out? Restick it. I think this one hole's not deep enough. That'll do, that'll do. Yes, I think that'll do. Okay, we just have two more holes to drill and then we can stop screwing around and do the actual fun parts here. The fun parts of thinking you know it. Just need pilot holes for the mountain here. Sneeze, sneeze. Yeah, okay. This piece of wood's good. I just need to finish up on this, clear out those holes. Oh, this blade's nice and fresh. Good. Now we get to clean up all this chowder and we can move on to the fun part. Ensemble. So I'll see in here, I got some standard issue uh, dollar store Velcro or was it hardware store Velcro? Either way, I'm not 100% sure how well this stuff actually adheres. The Velcro adheres to itself very well, but the uh, stickiness that they put on its arse end does not. I might want to use this, uh, this command strip. Velcro stuff is for hanging pictures on the walls and just anything command seems to be pretty decent. Like, hell, you can mount a fuse box on your wall with command strips, bud. Don't ask me how I know that. So the command strips, I'm, I don't want to waste them. So we're going to try the Velcro first, right? Um, what side do we want where? I don't even know how well, Velcro kind of sucks, but it's intentionally tangling. I got to put the picky stuff on here. Not much left. All right, so let's get this stuck. All right, now I did an alcohol prep to the surface. Always do surface prep first, right? All right, now let's uh, let's stick that down on there. Oh, the Velcro is so thick it clears the feet, bud. Yeah, I give it a good press. Okay. I'm not gonna trust it to be load bearing, but eh. the funny thing is, when I actually go to remove this, it'll probably just rip the adhesive before it like actually separates the Velcro. So we won't do that now, anyway. Oh, I just gotta get screwed, bud. <laughs> These screws are maybe a bit bigger than I plan on using. This isn't exactly designed for power, but we know that's a nice tight hole. Oh yeah. Okay, and I want, oh geez. I want to do the rubber feet treatment to this guy too. Is there such a thing as alcohol surface prepping wood? These aren't the rubberest feet in the world, but that's, oh geez, that slid right off. That's okay, it means it'll slide around. I might have to read first these guys with some proper glue. These might get some hot glue there in the future if they uh, prove to be nuisances. All right, so rubbery enough. Oh, geez, there's it's a, it's a little. Yeah, that might annoy me. I might have to. Um, now that's because I'm putting it on wood, right? Wood's probably not completely straight. Oh well, close enough. So da 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 da. This switch is going to simulate your stomp switch. I actually bought these to cheap out not putting stomp switch in some of my boxes, but I put stomp switches anyway. Power input, maybe I can actually use one of these washers this time. Ho ho. Huh, she's sliding. The lock washer's got nothing to lock against. 
Oh, look at that cutie cute cute. Look at that. <laughs> now we have to wire it up. Have to get some shotter under. Oh yeah. I'm even gonna have a battery clip so that I can have this 100% authentic. Just have to salvage it off this piece of equipment first. Oh, uh, we gotta start fabricating jumper wires and I'm not exactly sure 100% how I'm gonna terminate these on the end. You know, I haven't got some solid pins to stick. I'm thinking I'm just gonna tin them so that they'll jam in the hole and then uh, a little bit of heat shake to hold them firm. That's the wrong polarity. It's center negative, bud. Oh wow, we're off to a wonderful start. Now I'm not walking you through the pinouts of all this connection. Like that's just pedal 101. If you're interested in building a pedal, chances are those are some of the basics you might've ascertained on your own by now. Now the thing is for measurements, we want to assume that our ground bus could start like actually, no, we don't need to. It would just go to one of the AB strips pretty much. Yeah, it's a ground bus. So it doesn't need to be very long then. We will for good measure, give ourselves maybe a half a board length, just to say. <clears throat> Use some mid strip trickery. All right, this is where I have to decide how I'm gonna terminate these things. So I'm thinking stripping extra, giving it a tin, but it has to be a real thin tin or else we might not be able to get it into the, the holes. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, that'll work. Then with a bit of very small heat shrink, reinforcing the joint right here. Cause that's the thing. You can do this tinny method. What's gonna happen is as you use it, you're gonna end up getting a break right where the tin ends and the insulation begins. Uh, except this heat shrink isn't necessarily shrink enough to get that. We might have to coaxiolate it with a smaller piece of heat shrink to get on there. Either way, we have um, direction now. So we can do this positive wire, very thin tinny technique. Little snippet of very small heat shrink, put that on there, then a snippet of more larger heat sink right over top. Coaxiolation. Oh yeah, that feels better right there. Then we have something to grip on and just, yeah, and it doesn't friggin', oh, <laughs> this needs a bit of, a little bit of glue. <laughs> yes, sir, that will work. That will work. All right, strategy decided. Up to be on, which is convenient because these things use the poles opposite to the direction. So as that's off, then we can uh, put our crossbar at the very top here. 100% true bypass, bud. My traditional input output colors for these pedal builds. Blue is from the circuit. So that's output. Yeah, I think so. Can't quite remember. Now for the red and blue signal wires, I'm gonna go a whole board length because we have no idea where we're going to need to inject that signal. And there it is, sir. <laughs> All ready to prototype your circuit of choice. Wired up exactly like a pedal would be. We got the two modes of power. Some pedals need too much juice for a battery. Some pedals don't like running off an AC adapter at all. Input, output, power lines, and a couple signal lines. Grippy bits so that we can stick them anywhere we need. And true bypass. All ready to prototype your pedal of choice. At least one that would fit on one board, which is most I'm interested in. Now the question is, can I separate the Velcro? Oh boy, this stuff sticks good, bud. Yes, I can. And then I still have my freestyle breadboard for other projects. I'm gonna need a whole frick ton of jumper wires now. I got some um, some on order and we're ready to go. Wonder if I can throw something together real quick here, just to demonstrate. All right, I just kind of chucked together a quick and dirty DOD 250 circuit. Potentiometers, I'm gonna be using trim pots. They just kind of stick on there. I have a variety of these things, makes it real easy. Let's give it some power. I got the uh, old crate uh, blue voodoo combo off camera over here. I got on the dirty channel with the uh, boost turned off because it sounds good overdriving this guy. Even turn the gain down a bit more. Oh, it works wonderfully. All right, what did I do wrong here? Oh, I got a whole bunch of stuff connected to the wrong pin here. Supposed to be pin three, bud. That's why we do prototyping, right? Still doesn't work. I see no reason why this shouldn't work. Something, something was up, but it's working now. It's something with the power. There's a glitch on the new connector there.
But then, you know, Wampler's always being like, oh, it hums because it's open board. It's, it's open board, right? Oh, this is great. Because <laughs> it's battery powered, it's portable. It's portable. It's just like, it's it's a pedal. It's a, it's a pedal, bro. You just grab this thing, go over to the amp room, plug her into an amps, see how she sounds, start tweaking on components. I've always tried to figure out what would happen if I started screwing with the value of the um, feedback capacitor network there. It's try to get a little bit more a little bit more warmth you know there's stuff i've wanted to try to do to the 250 circuit so yeah now i can do that <laughs> stay tuned maybe i'll have some interesting results to share with you guys some original designs i doubt it freaking just everybody's making pedals just, ugh. Ugh. Ooh, how about a black cat but with those feedback networks that the 250 has because the black cat's kind of it moans it meows and Okay, that's enough.